So um, I'm here with Hannah Scandera, and she's the um, just recently former Secretary of Education yep. um, in New Mexico. Um, and um, you have been in New Mexico since 2010, and previously yep. you were in California, and also the um, a deputy um, commissioner in Florida. Correct. So you've um, you've covered many corners of our great nation. Um, so we're focusing today on um, on issues around choice and charters and vouchers and so I'm curious about what the current status of um, these different dimensions of choice are in New Mexico. Yeah. So when I think about choice in the landscape in New Mexico, uh, we definitely have charters. About 12% of our schools are charter schools. Um, we have uh, and are actually retooling as we speak opportunities for students in personalized learning um, and an open open environment in regards to courses they may not be able to access in their in their particularly in the rural areas. Um, we also have uh, we passed a school grading law um, about six years ago, and in the provisions of the law it says if you're going to a chronically failing school, a DRF, for two years out of the last four, you have choice in regards to schools um, in your. Uh, all over the state, actually. So we've tried to continue to push the envelope. We don't have a voucher program or tax credit uh, program, or, um, but we do have a, a robust charter environment, one that I hope is more robust over time. And um, so, so kids who are going to failing schools, they can choose another school in the public system or? In the public system, okay. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, the, this increase to 12% of schools that are charters, mm -hmm. um, has that has that been fairly stable, or has that grown dramatically over the last? It grew pretty dramatically when I first um, took my position, and then we've we've made a really concerted effort to yes grow, and we're actually in the process of seeing many of our high quality charter schools replicate, uh -huh. um, but also close charter schools who are not delivering for kids, who are not keeping their promise of we're going to give you a, a great education, or if they're mismanaging. Uh, taxpayer dollars. Um, we also have begun to close charter schools. And and what's the authorizing agency for charter schools in New Mexico? In New Mexico, we have um, a public education commission. So that and, and in essence, they're uh, they are elected regionally, and they are the the state authorizer, if you will. Okay. And um, based on their decision, a charter can appeal to the secretary's office okay. if they want to dispute the decision of the public education commission. We also have uh, local authorizing districts, and we're about a 60-40, 60% state, 40% local district authorizer. Okay. And um, is, there a, is there a term that a school will typically be authorized for? Um, our typical authorizing period is five years. We actually did try and bring a bill this last year that said if, if you're you know, a, a high-performing charter school based on our school grading and, and fiscally, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, you can extend that authorizing. The bill did not go through. Mm -hmm. We also had, if you're not, that you can, you can your, your five-year window could be cut short. And what we have begun to do uh, and see is a shorter authorizing period for schools that are struggling. So let's say you're a, a D school and you come back and you want to be reauthorized for five years. Mm -hmm. You might get a one-year mm -hmm. authorization with provisions. And if you don't meet them, you can be closed. As you've, as you've experienced this growth of charters, what are some of the challenges that you've encountered? Yeah. I think uh, in New Mexico, uh, quality. Uh, uh, many uh, spaces and places have CMOs. We do not have a single CMO in our state. We are all local. Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually, when you think about that and you compare us to other states, uh, New Mexico is very unique in not having CMOs and having uh, nearly 12% of their schools as charter schools. Um, but with that, I'd say we, we had at one point, um, Raymond Mackey did a, a review of our charter schools and, their, and did a, you know, a comparison study on their effectiveness compared to, tr to traditional public schools. And uh, truth be told, our charters were about equal. And um, so our highest performing schools in our state are top 10 or so. Many of them are charters. Mm -hmm. um, however, also our lowest performing. And so we've pushed really hard. We spent three, the last three years trying to bring a bill to close charter schools who truly aren't delivering for our kids. It has not passed. The lobby for <laughs> keeping schools open that aren't serving kids well is actually quite, quite high um, or, or quite aggressive. Um, and uh, so we haven't been successful in that yet. 
Um, but I, I think the biggest struggle is the is the quality and the expectations and. And so I think that's, a, that's an important push. Um, I will tell you in our high-performing charter schools, for example, I am a big sister in the Big Brother Big Sister program. My little sister was in a chronically failing school and uh, but was getting all A's and top of her class and the top of her school. And her mom didn't realize until we went to the parent-teacher conference that she wasn't even on grade level. Mm. And so her mom looked for a choice and she was incredibly uh, fortunate she made it into a charter school that had a wait list of about 700 kids at the time. Wow. They only served about 500 kids. She just once again made it into another charter school that has a 1,400 student waiting list and they only serve about 400 kids. So those charter schools that are truly knocking it out of the park, their wait lists are exponential. And uh, we, uh, th there are folks who are really encouraging them to replicate because the demand is so high for good schools. Right. Is there a, um, so you mentioned the study that showed no difference in performance. Mm -hmm. Was there higher parent satisfaction? Um, that I don't know. And, and Mac, you probably looked at that and I just don't recall. Um, I, I would say from our vantage point, we, as we talked to uh, parents on, and I recently launched a family cabinet and really working to build the bridge directly to parents because we're, uh, what we found is they aren't getting great information and they don't know their choices and options. They don't know what's available for their, their kids. And every parent wants a great school for their kids. And uh, I can tell you that um, my little sister's mom is incredibly, I mean, now she has four younger siblings. They're all uh, now um, being, you know, uh, headed. They have, they have, what's it called? Um, yeah, just the parent, the, right. the family. Um, right, gets, gets access uh, yes, to the school. Yeah, which is incredible. And uh, her mom is thrilled with her education. And uh, I haven't met a parent who chooses um, their, their child's school that has not been um, excited about that choice. Is, um, uh, it's very interesting that, um, that you just um, focused on grassroots charter schools mm -hmm. as opposed to CMOs, charter management organizations. Yeah. Um, is, that a, is that a choice that the, that the state made or it just evolved that way? Or? Yeah, it just evolved that way. I, I actually think it would be really helpful. You just heard me talk about demand for high quality schools and that we have greater demand far and away for high performing charter schools than we can deliver. Right. And so um, I'm hopeful. I think when uh, CMOs make decisions, um, uh, they often look at you know numbers, et cetera. New Mexico is not a huge state. Charters distributed more towards the more populated areas yes. as opposed to yes. some of the more sparsely mm -hmm. populated areas? A third of our students are in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And the majority of our charters are in Albuquerque or the kind of that corridor um, that has uh, Santa Fe, Albuquerque. We're, those cities are all right next to each other and the majority of our charters are there. We're a very, very um, rural state actually. Um, and we have, we have the fifth largest land mass in the nation and um, numbers wise we're certainly not um, uh, densely populated other than in, in Albuquerque and that is the, the central spot for our charters to date. Are there advocacy groups who are trying to get um, voucher programs started in New Mexico? You know, there are not advocacy program uh, folks that are necessarily pushing for charters. We've had a few legislators run a couple of bills but didn't get any traction at all around uh, choice and, and uh, um, private school choice. Um, I think there are definitely advocacy organizations who would like to see more expensive charter school and I think that that's probably the next step for, for New Mexico. So, so really, it's it's charter schools that are still using the state accountability system yep. as their metric for Absolutely. for main, maintaining quality. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I'm curious, you know, more generally um, about um, good policy um, based on best practice mm -hmm. and research in New Mexico. Um, what mm -hmm. kind of efforts are you doing in that area? So one of the things we did early on, um, when I moved to New Mexico, um, we were under the No Child Left Behind um, law, and uh, we uh, quickly applied for a waiver and uh, for many reasons, but under that law, 99% um, of our schools were failing. And uh, many schools were failing in New Mexico, and still, some still are. But when all your schools are failing and there's no differentiation, it, it is very difficult to begin to say, all right, actually, We've got some model schools here, and we need to replicate those or see what's happening there. And then for those that are not, let's call it what it is. Um, in our case, because all were failing, 
um, at, we have 89 school districts, every single superintendent des um, described what success was. So we felt like it was really important before actually we really did a hard push on choice that we actually had a, a, a common bar and expectation that differentiated amongst our schools based on proficiency and growth and other measures so that we could begin to see what's working, what's not, and make sure that we're encouraging the replication of those things that are really making sense um, in our schools and um, certainly not expanding and not growing in um, our schools that are, are failing our kids. Um, I serve on the board of um, NAXA, Na um, National Authorizing, and you know they've spent a lot of time. NAXA is? It's a national um, charter school authorizing, okay. and the best practice on authorizing. Okay. And they're, they've spent a lot of time around, um, it's not just choice, but it's ha making sure that it's a quality choice. And how do you, as an authorizer or as a state, you know, begin to put in expectations and, and et cetera that establish that um, there's an expectation for schools and replication, so. One thing that I'm really curious about is one of the theories of, um, of a choice, um, concept or model is that it will introduce a sense of competition in mm -hmm. the existing public yep. school system that will make them step up their game. Do you see any mm -hmm. evidence of that in, in you know, New Mexico? Great question. Um, I see a lot of evidence of folks not wanting cho a choice in charter near them because of the competition. Right. Um, I, I think, you know, intrinsically I believe that that does happen. I don't know that I have data that says, look, here's, here's what happened. They, we opened this charter school here, and then this, the local school, the c neighborhood school got better. Right. I can tell you in Albuquerque that um, the previous superintendent, um, so we have state authorizing and district authorizing, um, and when you district authorize a charter school, their schools go into your accountability, if you will, um, as a district, mm. um, because we also grade our districts, um, and your, their, your graduation rate calculation and everything else. Well, mm. um, this superintendent got pretty smart, and he began to not authorize the failing charter schools and told them to go to the state, and he sought out the high-performing charter schools and to bring into his district and authorize because he knew that they would make him look better. Right. <laughs> so, um, so that's not a, a necessarily competition, but it is you're seeing folks realize, hey, there is, there's something to the high quality charters that help me out um, and help my district out. And so, uh, uh, like I said, I don't have any you know, uh, research around that, that choice right. and quality, um, you know, kind of a competition right. uh, paradigm, but I think it exists, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it's, it's certainly something that we should follow as we, absolutely. As we proceed. Absolutely. Kenneth Skandero, thank you so much. It was great oh, to meet you. Oh, absolutely. Great to meet you, too. I look forward to following your career as you progress. Well, thank you okay. very much.